If you found out your coworker had some very weird bathroom habits, would you be the jerk for sharing them with other people? We'll get to that in a bit, but first, am I the jerk for not wanting my husband's niece to stay with us? My husband has a niece, 16-year-old female, called Jenny. Everyone in the family adores Jenny. I've never met her dad, but apparently he's an abusive jerk. Jenny basically lives with her aunts and uncles. The family all dote on her. She can do no wrong. My husband is worse than all of them. We have a two-year-old son, but my husband seems to love his niece more than our son. It's really frustrating because his family doesn't care about our son's accomplishments as much as Jenny, like, oh, your son learned how to walk? Well, Jenny could walk when she was one week old. Now, the problem, Jenny is supposed to be with us for Christmas. I don't want her here. I want to have Christmas with my son and husband. I want my son to get all of our attention. Jenny's other aunts and uncles are all willing to have her on Christmas, so I asked my husband to just let her be with them. He got mad at me and said it's our turn and he wants to have his niece with us. I told him I want to have a Christmas for our family only, and he then called me a jerk and said Jenny is family too. Am I the jerk? I don't get what OP has against Jenny here, they don't seem like they're acting spoiled. And let's be real, their two year old is not going to remember that Christmas. Also, hi. I'm Steven, and if you enjoy getting to decide whether or not all of these people are jerks or not, why not hit that subscribe button down below. That said, this next story is, am I the jerk for asking my cousin for the wedding gift back after she said I wasn't welcome at the reception? I'm 20 year old female, my cousin Isabel, 26 year old female, is getting married in January. I chose a set of Royal Albert plates from the gift registry and they've already been delivered. The invitation said the ceremony would be first, followed immediately by meals, and guests would start making their way to the reception hall. The invitation also said to be prepared for a night of drinking and dancing at the reception. A couple days ago, Isabel called me, we made some more small talk. She then said she wanted to call just to confirm I knew the reception was more for partying and it really isn't suitable for me considering I'm not even 21. I said I'm fine drinking water and soda. But she replied the capacity for the reception hall is smaller, so they're not including younger guests. Mind you, this is a child-free wedding, so there isn't really any younger guests. I get not wanting to have kids around for the reception. Isabel said that I'm invited to the ceremony and dinner. I was confused and told her this was really weird. The invitation said ceremony and reception. She replied she's sorry for the misunderstanding, but it said there would be drinking and stuff. Eventually I told her, okay, I respect that, but if she could kindly send the plates back so I can get a refund. Isabel asked why, because I'm going to be there for the most important part and they've included me in the catering. I said I was expecting to attend the entire wedding, not half, and that I bought the gift based on that. I might not attend at all now, so she needs to send the plates back and I'll decide another suitable gift, if any. She said no one takes back gifts and it's not like I'm uninvited. If I don't want to come now, that's on me and I've already gotten the gift. I also have gotten a text from my other cousin, Isabel's sister, that I'm making a scene. She's 19 by the way and attending the reception. I know another cousin the same age as me is attending the reception and I think Isabel's talked to other relatives about it. My fiance thinks I'm okay though, so was I the jerk asking to return the plates? I think it's pretty clear that they just didn't want OP around. I mean, do you have to be a drinker to go to that reception? I think OP's in the right here. This next story is, am I the jerk for telling my friend she can't bring her baby to my birthday celebration? I'm turning 25 in February and was planning a weekend girls trip to Chicago. I have a friend who's about to give birth any day now and our birthdays are 10 days apart. I was hesitant to invite her in the first place since she's about to give birth but another friend let slip about my party, so she basically asked if she could come along too. I said sure, and then she said she would have to bring baby girl along. Now, on this trip, I was hoping to cross a bucket list item off my list, taking edibles and going to an aquarium while in Chicago, finishing the night off with Korean barbecue and drinking, an environment I wasn't comfortable having a baby around. My friend doesn't see the problem with bringing her two-month-old along at all, Everyone agrees with me, the baby shouldn't come with. My friends say that since I don't have kids, I shouldn't have a say in how she raises her baby. Am I the jerk? This just sounds like two 25 year olds who are in vastly different parts of their lives. One is already in motherhood and one is still kind of sounding like they're in their figuring themselves out phase. Either way, I don't think a two month old should be around that. 
This next story is, am I the jerk for giving my sister a cheap gift for her wedding and not a necklace I myself own? I'm 23 year old female, my sister 27 year old female got married a month ago and the wedding was beautiful and clearly very costly. They had a registry but almost everything was really expensive. Think Dyson purifier, Fornicetti candles, etc. She also had a Tiffany alphabet necklace on it. I wear the same necklace which my husband gifted to me for our wedding last year. I didn't ask for anything and I know he saved up. Tiffany jewelry is absolutely not the regular standard for us. There was an option to give a monetary gift towards the honeymoon, so we ended up gifting $150 and I think it was more than fair. The sister brought up that she noticed I only gave a small contribution to the honeymoon. I said yes, that's the gift. She replied she expected family to be more generous, and other siblings and relatives got thoughtful gifts. I could have at least gotten the Tiffany necklace, since we can afford it. I told her no, we can't afford it, and we gave what we could give. It's not my fault everything on the registry was so expensive. This was at Thanksgiving by the way. There were other people around and I guess they could see the conversation between us was getting heated. My sister said I need to stop acting so self-righteous and they can put whatever they want on their registry. And others got gifts, so it's just me being cheap. My stepmom overheard and said I could have given a larger monetary amount or split the cost of the necklace with someone else. And I didn't appreciate the effort put into the wedding. I didn't think I was in the wrong here Reddit, but I'm kind of doubting myself. I guess we could have given more money considering this is family. Am I the jerk? Even if OP did give an amount that was lower than you would expect, which I don't think they necessarily did, it is so ugly to go and harass somebody because they didn't give you enough money. This next story is, am I the jerk for no longer responding to my friend's medical emergencies? I, 30 year old female, have been friends with my friend Mary, 27 year old female, for roughly 5 years. We are completely different people who met at work and somehow became pretty close friends. Three years into our friendship, Mary started becoming sick. No one really knew what was going on, but it all escalated into her passing out at work and needing an ambulance to get to a hospital. I could sense she was scared because she didn't know what was wrong with her. I took it extremely seriously and stood by her side through it all. Whenever she texted or called me because of her medical emergency, aka her being scared to collapse or faint randomly, I would immediately answer and go see her. I spent many days by her side and often spent all day accompanying her until her husband or a direct family member took over. This all went on for roughly a year until she was finally diagnosed with severe anxiety and a panic disorder. She did get it treated through therapy and returned to a new normal, being able to do things alone again. In the meantime, my life had changed drastically. I found a new job, met my now husband, and we moved into our own place. Naturally, we hadn't seen and spoken much during that time because I was so busy. Anyway, I found out that Mary's condition had gotten worse recently when she called to see me in the middle of the night, asking me to accompany her until her husband would be back from work. I did go to see her, and upon asking her why therapy was no longer helping, she claimed she quit therapy because she wanted to get through it on her own. I asked her if her family knew, but she said she didn't want to worry them, so they don't know. Her husband knows. Well, her calls became more frequent again, but this time it was hard for me to just leave everything and be there for her. At first, I was there for her again, but with time, I just didn't have the energy to do so anymore. Her request became irrational and more demanding. And while I have sympathy for her and her condition, I see no point in putting up with it if she's refusing proper medical help, let alone from her immediate family. I started making up excuses why I couldn't help her at certain times. It all boiled down to last Thursday, where I got a message from her at 4am asking me to take her to her parents' place because she was having a medical emergency. I saw the message, but I ignored it because I just couldn't take it anymore. In fact, I ghosted her and went back to sleep. The next day, I pretended to have slept through her text and found out she'd managed to stay at home until her husband got there. But she didn't fail to make me feel bad for ignoring her messages. She's been giving me the cold shoulder since. I know she's mad I didn't answer or help her when she needed me. 
I do feel guilty, but I thought if it was really an emergency, she should call an ambulance. So, Reddit, am I the jerk for ignoring my friend during another of her medical emergencies? I think OP's honestly done more than a lot of people would. The realistic fact is not everybody can just be 24-7 drop of a dime. But not only that, but also continue to just keep putting up with it. Our next story is, am I the jerk for telling my self-centered cousin that her kid couldn't have my squishmallows? Me, 24-year-old female, has a cousin, 21-year-old female, who has a daughter, 7-year-old female, who's always been a little self-centered. She always thinks that her and her family are the most perfect family who deserves anything. I collect these little stuffed animals called squishmallows that are very popular with kids, and I have a lot of them. This Monday, our family had our annual Christmas party, and my cousin and her kid came. Her kid automatically saw my Squishmallow collection, as you could see inside my bedroom door when you walk through the front door. The first thing she said to me was, Can I see your stuffies? And I wasn't going to be rude, so I let her. She kept on repeating the same phrase, I wish I had Squishmallows, but I kinda ignored it. She spent her whole time glaring at me and my Squishmallows, as if she was mad or something. When it was time to leave, I saw my cousin's kid crying and my cousin walked up to me. I can't remember exactly what she said, but it was something along the lines of, Look, you have so many Squishmallows and my daughter has none, so can you give her like five? And I said, no, sorry, I've been building this collection for a while and I can't just give it away. She scoffed and walked out with her kid. Since then, I've been getting so many calls from family that I'm the jerk and say that I should have just given her the stuffed animals. Am I in the wrong? I think OP is definitely not in the wrong. I don't really care what the item is. If you're collecting it for yourself, you don't owe it to give it away to anybody. This next story is, am I the jerk for being a brat about not wanting garlic in my food? So I, 18-year-old female, just got back from college for winter break and the situation happened. So I want to know if I'm in the wrong. Me and my parents don't get along. I was a good kid and got good grades, but we started fighting a lot when I was in high school. Long story short, I went to a college four states away to get away from the family. My sister, 15, was the one to suggest it. Anyways, I've been back for about a week now, and my mom makes this extremely good chicken pot pie. It basically takes all day to make, and it's one of my favorite meals. I hate garlic. I don't know why, but I refuse to eat anything if I can smell it in the food. My mom's making the chicken pot pie, and I walked into the kitchen and could smell the garlic. I made the comment, wow, gone for a few months and you forgot you hate garlic. She just said, wow, it's like you don't cook and don't know what's in your food. The pasta I made two days ago had garlic in it and you loved that. This started an argument. I was mad that she could hold off on the garlic when I'm here and that she tricked me into eating it. The argument continues and she called me a brat that can cook her own food from now on. My sister heard the whole thing and basically said that I'm the jerk and that I'm the problem in the house, not our parents. So am I the jerk or problem? I mean, I get if you don't want to eat something that has garlic overload in it, but this isn't like feeding a vegetarian meat. You got called out because you enjoyed something you said, oh, I never liked that ingredient. This next story is, am I the jerk for refusing to pay for my son's dental surgery? I'm divorced from my son's mom, and she took the easy way out on financial arrangements. Basically, I got stuck with paying things that are certain, like our son's private school and extracurricular activities where she's responsible for their health insurance and medical bills and their nanny. She doesn't pay much for coverage, and our sons don't need medical care until now. Our eight-year-old super cute son has a tooth growing from the roof of his mouth, and it needs to be removed quickly. It's not a simple procedure because he needs to be put under anesthesia and we have to go to a pediatric oral surgeon. Most oral surgeons will not do the procedure on a child. We eventually found a very good pediatric oral surgeon and it's going to come out to be $3,000. It's that much because dental insurance doesn't cover much and an anesthesiologist is expensive. It had to be paid half for an appointment and half the day of the appointment. My ex asked me if I was going half. I said, nope. The bill's your problem, not mine. This is what you wanted, remember? You spent the last few years with so little childcare expenses that you got used to it. 
She went on to say that she doesn't have that kind of cash laying around, and it doesn't make sense to put it on a credit card with interest rates. I told her to go sell blood. I don't care, and yes, I actually budget my money and could pay all of it, and it wouldn't be that big of a deal. She ended up having to take a loan from her credit union to pay for the surgery. Our son was always going to have his surgery, and there was no delay. It might be a little controversial to some, but I think OP's not the jerk. They had an agreement, and now that it's expensive, she's trying to renege. OP said they wouldn't let their son go without the procedure if they had to. They're not just willingly bailing somebody out when there was an agreement. Our next story is, am I the jerk for taking an Uber to a wedding so I wouldn't be late? My sister got married last weekend. I flew into town and my parents insisted that I stay with them instead of a hotel like I wanted. My parents are consistently late for everything. I think it's a Latin thing. I hate being late. I think it's disrespectful. The wedding was at 2.30. My folks live about half an hour from the church. Noon rolls up and my folks aren't even getting ready yet. They're adults and I'm over dealing with them. I get ready, I send for an Uber, and I'm at the church for 2 o'clock. I check in with my sister. She asks me if I had any problems with getting my parents to church. I told her that I came by myself. She went white and said that I was responsible for getting them there on time. Well, nobody asked me to do that. I didn't even want to stay there. So now everyone starts calling my parents. They're getting ready. They were about 35 minutes late. The service was shortened because there was another wedding later that day. Everyone is still mad at me for not getting my parents there on time. My aunt said that I'm a jerk for messing up the timing of the wedding. My mom says it's my fault for not reminding them to get ready. Am I the only one who thinks adults should be able to be on time for their own kid's wedding without help? Opie wasn't enlisted with this responsibility. They could have prevented it, but they aren't playing parent babysitter. Our next story is, am I the jerk telling my niece she can leave after she went against the rules in my home, which she was staying in rent free? I'm 30, my husband's 34, and Amy is 22. Our niece Amy, my husband's half-brother's daughter, stayed at our home recently for almost two weeks. Amy had exam season at college, Her school's a bit of a drive from where she lives, and she would be losing a lot of studying time going back and forth, so she asked if she could stay with us as we're nearby. She didn't pay any type of rent, but did reimburse the increase in utilities. She offered to pay for the utilities, by the way, we didn't ask her to. We agreed because this was for an educational purpose, and I made it very clear to her that she couldn't be using this time for socializing, mingling with friends, and so on. Amy agreed to everything. Last week, I came home from work and saw Amy's husband in the kitchen. He'd come with a report she left at home. I asked her what was going on. She said she made him coffee since he made the trip, and he's only here for 30 minutes. I reminded Amy that we allowed her to stay here to make her studies easier, not so she can be bringing men over. I've also discussed this with her beforehand and she agreed, but now she's going against it. Amy started acting snarky. So I replied that she needs to respect other people's houses and rules, otherwise she can leave. She got upset and was quiet the rest of the time, but she did end up leaving a few days early. My husband said Amy should have respected the rules, but I was too harsh on her. I did text her later, but she didn't reply, and she didn't pick up my husband's calls either. He did talk to his half-brother and they were pissed off, but I also told a couple of my family members about it, and they think I'm fine. Am I the jerk? I think OP was being weirdly uptight. Like, I get they're a guest in your house, you probably didn't want them over. But God forbid they bring some stranger man, you know, their husband, over for 30 minutes. This next story is, am I the jerk for not giving my son's stepson money for university when I have for all my other grandkids? I have three kids. My husband and I worked hard to raise them and get them to be productive adults. And they are. I'm proud of all three. They were great kids and have become pretty good adults if I do say so myself. When my oldest daughter married a widower who already had a two-year-old child, my husband and I put money into an education fund. We did the same for every biological grandchild. We know a little bit about investing and compound interest. By starting early, we can invest a little bit each month. And by the time they graduate high school, we're able to provide each one with enough money for a good start in life. My oldest grandchild just graduated from high school. 
we were able to let them know that after scholarships and everything were taken into account, they would be graduating debt-free. We don't give any of them the money. We pay for tuition and fees and such. We learned our lesson from our youngest, our only son. We gave him the money like we had for his two older sisters. He had scholarships as well. But he blew through the money we gave him and chose to be a tradesperson instead. He does very well and now owns his own successful business. He was married but it didn't work out. We have two grandkids from that marriage. Last year, he married a very nice woman who had a 15 year old son. She had him very young and it caused a rift in her family. None of them came to the wedding. My son approached us about money for his stepson's education. After my husband and I discussed it, we said that we could afford to give him $5,000 to help out, but that was it. My son was very disappointed. He knows that all my other grandkids have enough money in their accounts to pay for at least two and a half years of in-state tuition and expenses. He makes good money, but he also likes to spend it on toys and vacations. I don't think that him or my daughter-in-law have anything put away for his stepson. That's why we offered the $5,000. My son and his wife are planning ahead for when he graduates in June, and they're still complaining that I'm treating him different from our other grandkids. I know that we are, but we didn't have almost two decades to save for him. That $5,000 came out of my fund for when I need to replace my car. Honestly, I think what Opie and their husband offered is more than fair. I think considering how long they've even known the child, a lot of people would be hesitant to give anything at all. Our next story is, am I the jerk for exposing my coworkers' bathroom habits? I, 25 year old female, work at a smaller company of about 15 people. I get along with pretty much everyone, with the exception of someone we'll call Alexis, 40 year old female. Alexis is very socially conservative and I'm not. I do my best to not talk about things I know will cause an argument, but they sometimes happen anyway. One time, I used the bathroom right after the cleaning crew finished cleaning it and didn't bother putting the toilet seat down because I was just going to squat to pee. I washed my hands and when I exited, I bumped straight into Alexis. I apologized and went on with my day. For the next two weeks, I thought Alexis was being particularly sanctimonious but I didn't say anything as it wasn't too out of character. The subject of women's sports came up during lunch, and she made a snide comment along the lines of, people like OP ruin them for everyone else. I was immediately confused. I've never been athletically inclined at any age, so I ask, do you mean tall people? She says, no, women that are still biologically men, she says with a glare. At the time, this came out of left field. I'm a cisgender woman. While I'm still a tomboy in my interests, I'm very physically feminine presenting. I said, okay, one, there's nothing wrong with being transgender. Two, I'm not transgender. Why would you even say that? She said, you can't fool me. I saw you come out of the bathroom and the toilet seat was up. I stared in disbelief as she seemed convinced this was the biggest gotcha moment. She couldn't even hide her smug smile. I said, I squatted, Alexis. The energy of the room was getting very awkward, so I decided to make a joke. Are you telling me that you park your bare butt on the toilet seat in public restrooms? She turned bright red. Apparently she did, because she started muttering something about not being weird before bursting into tears and leaving the room. My coworkers think it was rude of me to expose her like that, but I don't think I did anything wrong for trying to defuse a situation she put herself in. Am I the jerk? Her very clear bias and transphobia makes this more than easy to not feel like the jerk. I mean, they tried to put OP completely on blast. That said, our final story of the day is, am I the jerk for telling my brother he messed up my childhood too? This is going to take a load of explaining, so just bear with me while I try to give you the short version. I, 23 year old female, was basically brought up by my brother Lev, 31. He was always the one who took care of me, made sure I was safe fed and happy. My mom left us when I was three years old to escape my narcissistic, abusive, pathetic excuse of a father, Lev's stepdad. Then, six years later, my dad finally drinks and smokes enough to die of a stroke. Lev fights for custody of me, wins, and we move into a small apartment together. At this point, he's 18 and I'm 10, and Lev continues taking good care of me until things go to crap. 
He starts drinking, loses his job, some bad things happen, and I get taken away and put into a home. Lev and I stay in contact until I'm 14, when I find out that he's been in contact with our mom ever since she left. And nobody ever wanted to tell me because I was too young to understand. I'm furious and cut contact with him. Both he and my mom try to contact me several times, but I refuse to talk to them. I decide to contact him again when I was 19, and we've been fixing our relationship ever since. He stopped drinking, has a lovely wife and a baby on the way. I've been talking to my mom as well, and we're also in the process of fixing our relationship with a lot of therapy. I'm deeply grateful for everything Lev's done for me. I know how much he had on his shoulders back then, being so young himself and trying to raise me. Despite everything, he's truly my best friend. On the other side, I can't deny how much everything that happened messed me up. I'm still healing deep scars from my traumatic childhood. The other day, Lev and I were talking on Skype about my dad and a couple other things that happened. He basically says, that jerk really ruined both our lives completely. Everything was his fault. I wanted to agree with him, but like I said, I feel that some things were his fault as well. I must have had a weird look on my face because he asks, what? And I tell him, well, dad really was a jerk and he did some awful things. But some of the stuff you did really screwed up my childhood too. His face goes blank and he stops talking. After a few seconds, he says, I tried my best, you know. It wasn't easy for me either. I tell him quickly I know that and I'll never forget everything he did for me. He says, but you still think I screwed up your childhood? And before I could answer, he hangs up the call. He hasn't answered any of my messages or calls. I don't know if what I said was over the line, but I feel like I need to speak my truth as well. Am I the jerk? Edit because so many people raise this point. I blame my parents way, way, way more than anyone else in the situation. Also, this truly wasn't about blaming anyone. It was simply a comment I intended to make in a conversation. A stupid, insensitive, and unnecessary comment, and not one made to blame my brother for what happened. I just want to say thank you to the people who took the time to comment your constructive thoughts and criticisms. I wasn't expecting this much thoughtfulness or insight, and I appreciate the perspective most of you had to offer. I'm really touched. A lot of people mention therapy. All of us, Lev, my mom, and I are in therapy. We have separate therapists, but Lev and I go to the same office. I have a session once a month with Lev and a session once every three months with my mom. He has the same. I called Lev an hour ago and I'm now at his place. I apologized to him, told him how much I know how much he sacrificed for me to have a better life and that I see his pain and how much he struggled. He told me he understands my feelings too. He understands what he put me through, that I came into contact with a lot of things that no child should ever have to see because of certain choices. He intends to work on himself for the sake of our relationship and for his child. He obviously doesn't want history to repeat itself. I'm thinking of planning a surprise weekend trip with him to a mountain range close to where we live. We used to go rock climbing there and it's a happy place for both of us. I want to have a good time with him there and maybe take the time to talk about a few things. Mostly, I just want to show him again how sorry I am and how much I appreciate him. By and large, a lot of people in the comments said that OP was the jerk for what they initially said. Overall, to me, I think this sounds like a just very complicated, touchy subject situation. And honestly, I think the main thing to keep in mind here is Lev tried their best with what they had, and that nobody can really be truly infallible. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy Am I the Jerk here story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.